Hello, my name is Jerry Bant with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video covers how to add a new user to a call management system or CMS. First, I'll go over some details about adding a CMS user. Then I will demonstrate adding a new user to a lab CMS system. New users added through the CMS user data window will automatically launch the CMS application when they log in to the server. This works because their login shell is set to slash user slash bin slash CMS. However, users added through the operating system instead of the user data window will not be able to run CMS without using the SU command to change roles to a CMS user. Also, the CMS user data window will not display or allow modifications to users created through the operating system. Therefore, users that need access to the CMS application should only be added via the user data window. A new CMS user must be created in the user data window before any CMS feature permissions can be assigned or modified. Also, write permissions for the user permissions subsystem in CMS is required to add new CMS users. So the user creating a new CMS user ID must have the correct permissions. CMS user IDs need to be three to eight characters long. They cannot contain certain accented or special characters or spaces. Invalid characters in the user ID will cause CMS supervisor to display a failed or invalid character error message when the add action is performed. There are two CMS login types or roles, normal and administrator. Normal is used for CMS users that don't typically perform maintenance, configuration, and updating functions for CMS. Normal users are initially given only read permissions to most CMS features when they are created. An administrator can give or remove permissions for these users as necessary. The administrator role is for CMS users that will be performing maintenance, configuration, and updating for the CMS system. This user type is initially given read and write permissions for all CMS features. It is important to note that changing the user ID role after initial creation will not change the current assigned permissions for that user. Any permission changes will need to be done manually. Now I will start the demonstration. For this demo, I am logged into a lab CMS server with CMS Supervisor, and my login has write access for user permissions. To add a new CMS user ID, you must bring up the user permissions window. There are two ways to do this. First, you can click on Tools, then User Permissions, as I'll show now. The User Permissions window displays. Now I'll click on Cancel to show the second method to access this window. The other way to access the window is via the user permissions icon on the toolbar. Again, the user permissions window displays. If there is more than one ACD, you need to use the drop down arrow to select the ACD on which the user will be created and initially given access permissions. Later, this user ID can be given permissions to access other ACDs if required. I will select ACD Eagle 3 from the drop down list. Under Operations, 
select user data and then click OK. The user data window will display. First enter the new CMS user ID you want to add in the user ID field. Remember it must be three to eight characters long and not contain spaces or other special characters. I will enter user1 for the user ID. Then you would enter appropriate information in the username, room number, and telephone number fields. These fields are optional and can be left blank. For demo purposes, I'll enter first user for the name but leave the other two fields blank. The default printer name is also optional and can be left as the default of none. If there were any printers administered on the CMS server, the printer names would show up in the drop-down list and you could select one. This lab CMS does not have any administered printers so the only entry in the list is none. Now you need to select the login type. The default selection is normal user. I'll click administrator to select that login type. The maximum window count field defaults to four. Valid entries are one to 12. This field controls the number of windows the CMS user may have open at the same time. It is important to note that allowing many users to have multiple windows open will consume more CMS processor resources and could adversely affect performance. So set this field to only what a user requires to perform their job. You can modify this field later to a lower number if required to allow for better system performance. I will set this field to two. The next field is the minimum refresh rate in seconds for the real-time reports. The default is 30. Valid entries are from three to 600 seconds. As with the window count field, this field can affect CMS system performance. Many users running several real-time reports at a low refresh rate can slow the system performance. I will set this field to 60 seconds. The last field is the login ACD. Use the drop-down arrow to select the ACD that the user will be logged into each time they log in. The user can change to another ACD after logging in if they have access permissions for the other ACD. But the ACD chosen here will be their default when logging in. This field is required and cannot be left at the default of none. I will select Eagle 3 from the drop-down list. Now to add the user, click on the plus sign icon or click on Actions and then Add. I am going to click the icon to add this user ID. The status line at the bottom of the window displayed working and then successful. If the user ID already existed, the status line would show an already exist message. I'll demo this by clicking the add icon again to try to create this user a second time. This time the status line displays the already exists message. Now I'll demo what can happen if you try to add an invalid user ID. I'll change the user ID to user space to and the username to second user, but I'll leave the rest of the fields as they were for user one.
Now I'll click on Actions, then Add to try to create this user. The status line shows Failed. If I remove the space from the user ID and select Actions, then Add again, this time it should be successful. As expected, the status line displayed working and then successful. So it is important to pay attention to the status line to determine if the user ID creation was successful or not. Now I will close the user data window and return to the CMS supervisor controller window. This concludes the demo on how to add a new CMS user. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.